Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to talk about testing malware. How do you know, especially if, let's say you're looking for a piece of riskware, like Galaxy Swapper, which we're going to use as an example, how do you know which one is real? Another scenario where this is very helpful, how do you know, let's say you get a message from a friend saying, hey, I just got this, it's cool, you need to try this out. Now the problem is, do you, how do you know if that's your friend or if that's a hacker who's taken over your friend's account. Well, I'm going to help you. So first of all, this video is sponsored by Any.Rum, which is one of the best, most in-depth malware sandboxes I've seen. Uh, probably my favorite feature about this is similar to what you see in my videos. It has the ability to use MITM proxy, which I have not seen in other malware sandboxes. So that means we can get a bit more information on what this is really doing. So I'm going to walk through this and show how we might determine if something is legitimate. Now we're going to look at a fan favorite. Now, if you remember this one, this is the skull malware from the Windows on ARM video. So we're going to use Windows 10 64 bit. Let's just, we'll put this on out of curiosity, but I don't think it's actually that important for this. And we're going to give this one a bit longer just to see if it does anything interesting. We'll pretend this is in the downloads. And now let's run it. See what the skull really does. We did a bit of source code analysis, but now we can do some dynamic analysis. So it doesn't seem to do a lot of uh, connections. It's got a zombie. A zombie has been detected. It drops the executable, creates files with names similar to system files. Executable files dropped to creates files in root, checks supported languages. That's a common one, and that's simply, if we were uh, to run this with a Russian language, we'd probably, okay. So these are all legitimate requests. But what we can also do is we can go over to the Files tab, and we can actually see what it's doing. Wow, this has gone deep. Let's see if it created marijuana.exe. It doesn't seem to have done that. It creates these temp files. You can also see a process graph. We can see every process started by every other process. These were just ones I, I created uh, using the interactive mode, because that's the other cool thing is you can actually look around. You can see a text report where we can get a summary of everything that's happened. Zombie has been detected, Yara. Drops file immediately after start. Executables dropped or overwritten, creates suspicious files in system drive root, similar to system process, manual, okay, these were just ones I tested, and it checks to see if we've got Russian installed, because if we have a Russian keyboard installed, it's not supposed to go after us. And we can see no real network activity, and it does a pretty good job of filtering out the noise. But the main thing we can see is just that this thing creates an incredible amount of files most of which are temps that I assumed eventually be renamed. What's also very interesting is that every single one of these files created by the virus does in fact contain something different. Now this is, I think, the real download for Galaxy Swapper. And one of the highest ranking, and in fact, when I made my previous video on Galaxy Swapper, this was the number one result in Google, is galaxyswapper.ru. Now, the RU could be a red flag, but, oh, as the fact that the uh, download is coming from Calia Beach Hotel. That should be a red flag. So these are some other things. And you can also, with your mouse, actually control the VM if you need to run something. Like in this case, we had to run. And we can also, if we think this is going to run out of time, uh, we can extend it. And uh, we have now been hacked. I'm going to add another minute to this just in case. Now here we get what is a painfully obvious, if you see this pop up, come on, you know, you know you've been. And through this MITM proxy, we can figure out exactly. So this is being dropped from a Russian domain under a fake name, javaw.exe. It's probably, this is not a Java application as far as I can tell. And we can see the other requests. Now it seems like the actual data being sent to the command and control server is not being done over HTTP. DLL host just fired something off. And there we go. So we get every single thing that is done by this galaxyswapper.exe. This Java 
W, which is the actual malware, and that proceeds to run, and we get all the nice commands, a batch file, uh, which then proceeds to run a PowerShell that kills Windows Defender. That is malicious. And then runs pclient.exe, which then uh, seems to crash. So it may have actually detected the sandbox, but that's okay at this point because we know this is not legitimate. We can now stop this and get the full report. And we found the real link, but it turns out that it's absolutely ad ridden. So in order to make sure that we got the real download, M route. I think this is trying to get me to install the browser hijacker, which I'm not going to do. Okay, so now we've finally got the content unlocker to accept, and we got an exe file. This is all set up. Now, corporate customers are also able to have a new functionality, which is designed to defeat the mouse-based sandbox detection by using some sort of machine-learned algorithm to act like a real person. I, I don't have access to that, so unfortunately I can't verify what it does. Okay, so we get a .NET error. I think we have enough time on the sandbox to enable it. But we can see no obvious red flags. Drops file immediately after start. Now let's just simply try this again. Let's try going uh, to actually download a fake Fortnite skin swapper. How is this YouTube account? I, I, okay, YouTube's reporting functions are useless. I reported this ages ago, and they're still using this at download links. And it's the same file. Okay, I'm actually kind of frustrated. So this one does have a password, so I just had to enter that because my uh, Linux uh, system wouldn't actually file archive run there, couldn't open it. Okay, so immediately we can see this one has done a lot of really interesting things. So we get WMIs, which, okay, goes to PowerShell, and this creates an exclusion path so that Defender can't stop us. Then we uninstall a Windows update, and then we get right to work with the info stealer. It's actually one of the wildest things I have ever seen. I've seen, I've seen worms that install Windows updates so that they don't have to compete with other worms, but I have never, <laughs> never seen such a thing. And here are the requests where the malware command and control actually lives. Now, of course, our system did detect this as being malicious, clearly, and we can actually read what it sent. Act equals life. These are very small files. So the one that's going to contain a lot of data, okay, binary data, so this could very well then be uh, main. Oh, that's not binary data. That's the IP address of our sandbox. And here is the binary data, uh, Firefox, default, okay, no, this actually, this looks pretty, and this is, so maybe what it's doing is just stripping the, okay, Firefox default release, SQLite, so I think, oh, okay, here's the key, so it is just shipping the encryption and the key rather than doing so separately. That's why, like rather than decrypting and then sending. And then here is a different API. Oh, I, I know what this is. This is just, this is going to be XM rig. XM rig is kind of in that. It's also tiresome category. It's not interesting. It's not creative. It's just a tool that exists to steal people's computer resources and waste energy to make money. It's lame. The nice thing about this is in the span of 15 minutes, we have tested three different applications, found the real one, and not installed malware, which is always a good thing to do, especially when you're dealing with riskware, which is software. I, I think game cheats are actually anything like Tolkien Gamers is the highest risk software you can possibly find. Because so much of it, A, it's the age and demographics of the people involved, and it's also the people who play games on a computer have decent hardware, which to a minor is going to be extremely valuable. So that is going to be all for this video. I hope it was interesting. I hope you learned something. And of course, if you or your company is interested in a sandbox, I recommend checking out any.run who sponsored this video and supported the channel. I'm just going Okay, so now we're going to take a quick look over at the pricing page, and first of all, I'll just point out it's available absolutely for free if you want non-commercial usage just to evaluate, or for your own uses, you can learn a lot. Now, for this price, you can get quite a bit more.
can get MITM proxy, which I, I think is really useful. You can get more operating systems. And of course, if you're an enterprise, you can contact them. So if you want to try this out and test this professional grade sandbox, what you can do is you can go and you can sign up. You go to sign up here and you put in your name and then you put in your business name. And then you can put in a password and you can sign up for free. Now, if you're an individual and you don't have a business email, you can contact them via either X or Discord and explain why you would like to gain access. Thank you so much for watching this video, and thank you again to Any.Run for sponsoring this video and showing, allowing me to show off their product for all of you. I hope this was interesting, I hope you learned some things, and I hope this helps you avoid running into malware. That's all for now. Bye.